Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Nigro with a, another Chem Calculation screencast. This screencast is going to focus on skills around naming and writing formulas for acids. Um, the naming and writing formula skills, I've broken up into five different screencasts that are looking at each of a different compound type. Um, ionic, covalent, acids, hydrates, and simple organic molecules. If you need assistance with any of those other types of molecules, please go look at that particular screencast. All right, so acids. So we're not gonna get into what acids do or <clears throat> their structures. We are gonna focus on naming and writing their formulas. So that means the first thing we have to be able to do is identify them, all right? So if you have the formula for an acid, it should start with hydrogen and have a state of aqueous, all right? If you have a formula that starts with an H and has a state of matter of aqueous, then you, probably, you have an acid, all right? If instead you have the name, it's actually much easier. That name should end in the word acid which makes it pretty easy to spot, all right? So once you've identified your compound as an acid, before you can do anything else, you do need a couple of tools. As always, you need your periodic table, all right? And that's gonna let us determine the charges of the anion, of the negatively charged non-metal portion, all right? You're also gonna need to know your polyatomic ions, all right, and that means name, formula, and charge. All right, <clears throat> we are also, again, going to be using the crisscross rule when building those formulas from the name. All right, and that's similar to what we did with our ionic compounds, where the charge of one ion becomes the subscript of the other atom within the formula. All right, <clears throat> now, before we get into the rules, we tend to classify our acids in two ways, all right? We have what's called a binary acid, all right? And a binary acid contains two elements, all right? A hydrogen plus some other non-metal, and that non-metal acts as the anion, all right? We also can have what's called a ternary acid, all right, and ternary acids has more than two elements, all right, and that means we're going to have hydrogen plus one of our polyatomic ions, all right, and depending on which type of acid we have, binary or ternary, that's going to determine the rules that we're going to use, all right, so we're going to start by looking at taking the name of an acid and converting it over to the formula. All right, so the first thing you have to do is to decide based on the name whether you have a binary or ternary acid. All right, if the name starts with the prefix hydro, followed by the root of an element and then ic acid, that hydro tells me that I have a binary acid. All right, so I'm going to write the hydrogen symbol, the hydrogen ion symbol, all right, and I should take a moment to mention that hydrogen's over there in group one. Now, it's not a metal like all the other elements in that group, but it does, when it's acting in an acidic way, act like a metal in that it's willing to donate its single electron to a non-metal or polyatomic ion, forming a hydrogen ion. All right, so hydrogen always forms plus one ions, always. All right, so we'd write the hydrogen with its plus one charge. And then we're going to write the element that's represented in the root of the name with its charge. And then we're going to crisscross the charges to rewrite the formula. Now, we should never have to worry about simplification with acids because hydrogen's always plus one. All right. So there's never going to be any way to simplify these formulas like we saw with the ionics. All right. What if we have a ternary acid? How do we know it's a ternary acid? Well, the key is 
there's no hydro prefix. So if there's no hydro prefix, it's got to have a polyatomic ion involved. All right. It should end in either ick acid or us acid. So ick acid or us acid. All right. Now, whether it's ick or us is going to give us some information about that polyatomic ion. If your polyatomic ion ends in ATE, like nitrate or sulfate, then your acid will end in IC acid, so ick acid, right? So for example, nitrate would be nitric acid, right? Phosphate would be phosphoric acid. If instead your polyatomic ends in ITE, like nitrite or chlorite, then your acid ends in OUS, so nitrous acid or chlorous acid, all right? So based on what the acid name ends in, that tells us which polyatomic we have. We're going to write down the formula of our polyatomic with its charge, crisscross with the hydrogen charge, and rewrite the formula, okay? So let's try a couple. All right, so we have nitric acid, so there's no hydro, so nothing out here. So I know this must be a ternary acid, all right? The acid ends in ic. So it's nitric, so that must be nitrate, all right? Oh, wait a minute, let me do something. That tells me this is eight, all right? So that makes it NO3, and I know that has a minus one charge. And then the hydrogen ion, which is a plus one charge, cross your charges, and you're gonna get HNO3. Now you should always check to make sure that your molecule is neutral overall, because remember, any compound that has charge involved, has to be neutral once it forms, all right? So we have plus one from the hydrogen, minus one with the nitrate. Overall, we have zero. So this is a good formula. All right, move on to this next one. Now we have hydro. So that tells me this is a binary acid. So it's hydrogen plus a non-metal. So hydrogen. And then we've got the root of chlor in here. So that tells me that's chlorine or chloride. So Cl group 17, minus one charge, and then we're going to cross our charges. So we get HCl, plus one for the hydrogen, minus one for the chloride, so a neutral molecule. That would be the formula for hydrochloric acid. All right, now we come over to hypochlorous acid. Now this is not hydro, right? So this is also going to be a ternary acid, all right? So that means it ends in OUS, so the polyatomic must be hypochlorite as our polyatomic. So plus one for the hydrogen ion, hypochlorite, because I know all my polyatomics, is ClO minus one. Cross our charges, and we're going to get HClO, all right? Plus one minus one gives us an overall neutral molecule. All right, go down to the next one. We've got phosphoric acid. So again, no hydro. So this must be a ternary acid. That ick ending tells me that my polyatomic ends in ATE. So this must be phosphate that's interacting with the hydrogen. So hydrogen plus one phosphate is PO4 with a minus three charge. So we're going to cross our charges and we're going to get H3PO4. So three plus one charges gives us plus three. One minus three charge gives us minus three, and our overall molecule is neutral. All right, carbonic acid. So again, no hydro. So this is also a ternary acid. That ick ending tells me that the polyatomic ends in eight. So this must be carbonate. So I've got H plus. Carbonate is CO3 with a minus two charge. Crisscross those charges. H2 CO3 is the formula for carbonic acid, all right? And then last, we've got hydro, oh, there's hydro, iodic acid. So that hydro tells me binary acid. So we're going to have hydrogen, oops, it's plus one charge, and the iode tells me it's iodine. I look on the periodic table, it's in group 17, so it's got a minus one charge. Cross those charges. And the formula for hydroiodic acid is HI. Hi. So plus one for the hydrogen, minus one for the iodine. All right. So this is how we take the names of our acids and convert them into the correct formulas. Again, 
it is vital that you understand and can write out the formulas, names, charges of those polyatomic ions, right? So now we're going to look at taking the formula and converting that into the name, all right? Again, we split this into two types, a binary acid, where we only have two elements, one of which must be hydrogen, and then a ternary acid, which is more than two elements, hydrogen plus one of our polyatomics, all right? So remember that binary, you have to have hydro out front. Ternary, no hydro. And you're going to know that a polyatomic ion of some form is present. Now, in class, I give my kids this memory device, which is I ate something icky. All right, and what that helps me remember is if my polyatomic ends in eight, my acid needs to end in thick. Sorry. Come on. There we go. All right. You can also, if you like, there's another one. That bite was delicious. All right, where that I-T-E ending of your polyatomic gives you an O-U-S ending of your acid. So those are two memory devices that help you remember which polyatomic ending gives you which acid ending and vice versa. All right, so let's start. We've got HF, so that's two elements. So this is a binary acid. So I know I need to start my acid name with hydro. Then I go look at what the element is and it's fluorine. All right, so I'm gonna use the root F-L-U-O-R and then it ends in ic acid. All right, all of your polyatomics sorry, all of your binary acids end in ic acid, okay? Next, we look at this next one, H2SO3. So I've got three elements. So this is a ternary acid, so no hydro. So I need to look at what is this polyatomic, all right? Well, hopefully, I remember this is sulfite, and that I-T-E ending tells me that I need to have O-U-S at the end of my acid name. So this is sulfurous acid. All right, now I have H3ASO4. Again, I have more than two elements, so this is a ternary acid. All right, so no hydro. So I need to know what is the name of this. All right, and this compound, this polyatomic is arsenate. All right, so that means that ATE tells me the acid is in an ic acid. So we get arsenate, nope, so arsenic acid. All right, here we have HC2H3O2, so clearly more than two elements. So we're going to have a ternary acid again, no hydro. I look at that polyatomic, and hopefully you recognize that as acetate, except you spell it right, acetate. That A-T-E tells me I need ic at the end of my acid name. So this is acetic acid. All right, H-B-R. So I've got two elements. This is a binary acid. Hydro out front. I look at what that element is. It's bromine. So this is bromic. And then we end with acid. Hydrobromic acid. And then last, H2CRO4, right, again, a ternary acid. This polyatomic is chromate. So that A-T-E tells me I need to end my acid in ic. So this is chromic acid. Okay, now there is one polyatomic that's reasonably common, all right, that does not end in I-T-E or A-T-E, all right? And that is cyanide. That ends in I-T-E. Cyanide is C-N minus one, all right? So when it forms an acid, it forms H-C-N, all right? Plus one for the hydrogen, minus one for the cyanide, all right? And when I want to name this acid, there's no hydro because this is clearly a ternary acid, all right? 
and we use the ick ending. All right, that's the only one that can be a little strange because it doesn't have an eight or an ite. Now, you might say, well, what about hydroxide? All right, okay. Hydroxide. All right, this is OH minus, whoops, minus one. All right, so H, O, H. You might say, well, that's hydro oxic, oxic acid, except we know that this is actually H2O, which we use a common name for water, not an acid at all. Okay, so you should hopefully understand how to recognize an acid from its formula or its name and then convert that formula into its name, or if given the name, convert it into its formula. Okay?